Welcome back everyone, it's Desi here. In this video I'm covering a bunch of common solo mistakes that you guys are probably making during your gameplay and don't really even realise it or realise that it's a mistake. These are things that I've been doing while I've been playing solo customs. I've basically been banging these out and trying to prepare for Dreamhack Sweden and work on my mistakes in preparation for that since I'm going out there on Tuesday I need to be the best of the best when I get there and actually qualify for the finals. This is how it's looking. So I've basically been playing all these solo customs. I'm going to go back and point out each one of my mistakes in these games that I've been playing and how I can fix those things. Mainly I'm just doing this for myself, but it should help you guys actually get better if you're serious about improving your place in the solo cash cups or in 2022, there's gonna be a load of solo cash cups, two round cash cups as well that you need to be qualifying for. So make sure to go ahead and like the video if you enjoy this kind of content. Also make sure to check out the solo's mask cast. I'll be updating that next year as well, in case you guys are wondering. Okay, so this is basically how it's gonna work. I'm gonna go back and look through my replays and point out my exact mistakes as I make them throughout the end game. So first of all, you can see some simple stuff here. I'm just gonna head and use my own pad, make sure I double dip and storm, take two ticks just to save all those mats. And I land on a really high layer in the end of first moving and basically use zero mats on that rotate which is obviously really nice to see. Okay, from here, this is where the slight mistakes start coming in, is when I actually play for height. Because of this high layer here, I could possibly even be looking for height and actually realizing, oh yeah, I'm the only one on height, no one's padding, and I could be playing completely on height right here. But instead, I'm focusing on this player below me and kind of focusing on that mid-ground mindset, which is honestly good to have normally, but you should notice when height is free, which it is right now. Okay, I pause here for a second and actually evaluate how I'm going to rotate forward. And then I run to Arch, who's going to Dreamhack Sweden with me. And I kill him over on the high ground, get his loot. Don't bother picking up his fan since it's not really that important, in my opinion. And then I go ahead and start dropping towards the front. So, this is another big mistake. The first one was not looking up a high early and realizing I had it for free, basically. And this next one is not looking at the potential threats while you're tarping on the high ground. You always need to be observing if there's any players in the sky as number one priority and any other players in second height who are looking up as number two. So you can see here, I see the player building up and I just somehow start dropping down, looking back and checking. I get beamed from front side, get cracked by him with some good AR tracking. At this point, I sort of panic, end up dropping down, and I'm to use a lot of mats and basically lose height for free. If I manage to maintain there, looks at potential threats, I definitely would have a really much better game here and not lost height for free. Recycle this pad. This is good movement by me to actually avoid the player on height and swing around. I'm just getting wide behind him. I still turn to pump to actually get a refresh as well. And at this point, this is where another couple mistakes come in from me. Zone play is extremely far here, and you're going to see I end up start choking. I don't choose a good layer as I come forward. So you can see this layer is really clustered. I should be starting to layer down, perhaps, and actually get onto a free layer, rather than staying and maintaining on this layer. And again, towards endgame, when you're somewhat shambles, you can't just play a really high layer. You're going to get cleaned up later on is the mistake that I make here. So I'm not able to find a refresh because everyone on these layers around me is all really healthy. I should start dropping down earlier and looking for a refresh since I desperately need it. Start dropping down. This is just simple stuff. We're just playing Edge of Storm. And you're going to see here in a second what I actually end up doing to die. So I go underneath this pier thing, get a pre-dot on this guy. Wait a second and start looking. And I overcommit for this kill here. You can see I run out into the open instead of just playing patiently on backside of Storm. I actually run forward with zero mats and I put myself in a really cussed spot just trying to get this kill off 50 dags. So it ends up killing me like there. But I would have died either way to this guy on the right hand side or this other guy. The mistake that I'm making here is that I should play a lot more patient, play Edge Storm, farm more mats, wait for the other players to come forward. I'm at this choke point in the zone as you can see where all of these players here have to come into me. So if I just play slow, make sure I cover myself, I'll actually just get a refresh by someone coming into me. You can see exactly what I mean. Instead of just peeking this window, I would have killed this guy. There's a possibility of killing that guy on backside. There's a possibility of killing this guy as well as he jumps down for the kill there. There's a lot of different things I could have done if I just played a little bit more patient in that final zone situation rather than just running forward trying to kill the first player I see. So the mistake that I made this game is just getting too greedy later on. I was basically playing and practicing my early mid game to the best of my abilities. My strategy is basically play edge, sort of dead side first, sort of position edge on second as you can see here. And then as soon as third zone goes ahead and pulls in a second, I'm going to go ahead and car rotate out my box. So I'm trying to go for a little bit more surge. I've kept my car safe in a nice 2 by one refound the mats as well. Have my head as I escape out on the car, and I go into dead center of third. That's your new strategy where I'm trying. It's not actually going fully dead center of third, as you can see here. I actually got out on a rock where I can refarm, as you can see. And when you're in this position like this, it means that you've got a higher chance later on. It's a little bit confusing, but you don't really get like a perfect fourth zone, if that makes sense. You either pull fourth zone where you're somewhat on the edge and you're kind of in your own open space and you've refarmed so your mats are still good, 
or you pull a fourth stone, let's say from here, where it's sort of like onto the road, if that makes sense. So I'll have to rotate a little bit, but it's a very easy rotate to do. You just waste like a hundred or something wood. You can get on a high layer, you can recycle a pad very easily if it plays like that. So that's kind of something I'm aiming for. It's not going exactly dead center third, but just refarming somewhere nice on third zone, near center, where I can get a nice zone pool like this. So let's get into the actual end game mistake that I make here in a second. It's basically getting too greedy, something I don't necessarily need. So you can see here, I see two players box fighting near me for surge. And you can see I'm actually able to pick up one of the kills and I overcommit forward with it. Again, this is one of the situations where you get something gifted to you. I kill Italian Tayson, as you can see right there. And I start tarping over on hard mats. I know this kid's got hard mats on his body. And it would have been a nice refresh to get. However, the thing is, it's not really worth the risk versus rewarding going for it. Especially because he was box fighting somewhere else. Maybe if he got this guy low and I could get the loot for free, I would have been cap cap going in game. But I'm still in a really stacked situation. I ran to this really good Polish player, especially like a Pope Pro British player. And he runs out and he starts hitting the piece on me. And it's a really laggy lobby in our screen showing. So he gets the piece on me. I do a nice little max damage. He opens up. I'm stuck in the corner there and he kills me. And I just died and wasted an entire end game. In the Dreamhack Final, there's literally a whole end game wasted where I've got the best loot. I've got regular splashes, I've got chilies, I've got everything I need to do well, and I'm over committing for something I don't need. It's just getting greedy, and it's just a really bad habit to have. And it's a kind of a habit people build up by playing customs where the players aren't the best. Okay, so this next mistake that I do, it's just a small mistake with timing and the rotis. I wanted to see if this playstyle would work. So basically, as you can see here, I'm boxed pretty near the edge of fourth. But as you can see here, I'm basically boxed on very near the edge of third, as you can see. I've got like six boxes wide, I've got a lot of space. And whenever you have a space like this and you've refarmed properly, it means that you can time your rotates really well. So as you can see, what I decided to do instead is just only rotate in a car as soon as zone pops, which is probably the worst thing that you can do here, because it means you're the only one going. As you can see, I start rotating, I immediately get shot by this guy, and the reason you might go, oh, why is this player shooting me, he doesn't really do anything for him, he's not going to kill me, right? It's just because he wants somebody to go for him and build. You always want to let some other player build, and he expects by shooting me out, which it eventually does, is if I have to build so much, I'm the one getting focused. I end up getting lobbied here, just because I get sprayed a couple times. I get sprayed from a few different angles. I only get tagged dirty, but because my car gets blown up, I end up going for like half of my hard mats, just holding against spray here. And a little bit later on, I do make a better timing rotate, so you can see. I just pause and chill in this box for a second. I let the other players rotate in front of me. I let them use their builds. I let them rotate forward. And then as zone starts closing here, I actually make a decent timing rotate. This is just some awful mechanics by me. And I'm getting out of this guy doesn't full piece me. I get up, make sure I'm in hard max, make sure I'm in metal, hold my balls for a second. And that timing rotates a lot better. Just because I'm doing it with other players. This guy's moving as well. I'm making sure I'm not on the same level as him. This player's still behind me that can get held. This player's in front of me that just like freshly boxed up so they're not on full max raise the spray. It's just a nice timing rotate and it works a lot better rather than going early and being the only one going, especially in a car, it's not optimal. Okay, so the mistake that I do during this end game here is actually getting too greedy with the double so, so you can see here, the first double dip that I'm doing is perfectly fine and I'm just hitting a pad back in Storm. I've got med kits, I'm playing three med kits in these games just for the sake of doing this and I try getting too greedy with it later on. As you can see here, I hit this pad, it was perfectly fine for me to just land either here, over on towards here, just underneath second height, any of those bots. So I get very greedy and go back in Storm and basically try to land whatever second moving pulls. But instead, this guy in height starts focusing me. I've taken too many ticks of Storm. He pumps me with the spans in there, and I end up just dying out there. He was just completely stupid. The better play to do, the less risky play. I don't know if this would work in a really stacked lobby where there's like a lot of people going for height. But height at the moment, since Shadow Floppers has been removed, is a little bit easier to play. It's definitely to just kind of land on a high layer, as you can see here. And then as soon as zone pulls, basically do what Jubble is doing, right? When you go into the dead side, into this north hand side over here, you ramp top, you get onto this right hand side of the storm, I call it the anti jam strat, and you get over here. Coach Harry's sort of doing it, but he doesn't have to tarp, so he's just wasting so many mats, as you can see. It's turn next, which you guys doing as well. Basically just tarping very cheaply on a high layer, and instead I just out the air, because I'm getting too greedy, doing some stupid stuff since I'm screen sharing. Very simple mistake that I easily can avoid. Don't get too greedy on recycling pads. Just hit them once, make sure you're on a high layer, and then you can just play an end game with good mats from there. Okay, so this next game is just something I'm trying to do a lot more. It's just play slightly greedy for pads. I don't know why, but people in solos are oftentimes just really scared of going for a pad when it spawns in right next to them on a job. Again, you do have to invest a little bit of mats, but a lot of the times it's worth doing. Right here, you can see I just go forward and metal. I get sprayed out a little bit. I have to build like two boxes worth basically of mats. But I get a basically free pad for free, which is so insanely good because it just means you save so many mats later on. And if you can manage to recycle a pad properly, then you get an extra pad for moving zones, which basically means you can go for height, a lot of things like that. 
So I'm pretty happy that I actually did that. I've started to do that a lot more. Just going for pads whenever they spawn pretty close to my box. And just taking the risk of getting box fought when you go for it. Since I do think it's worth the risk. And the mistake that I actually make in this game is a lack of awareness towards the later bit. But on this fourth, fifth zone rotate as you can see here. There's a couple of different things that I think I could have done differently. The first thing is just realising that it's a high elevated zone. So you need to get further in than you need to. Again it's just something I just completely forgot about. Normally you only really think of it on these bottom right catty corner zones. But it's something really prominent. So you can see here, I'm just holding, trying to get a nice timing rotate by forcing these other players to build for me. And then I start going. This guy's left his box already, so I'm very free to do this. And again, one really useful thing that I think you guys should start doing as you rotate in all the time in solos and trios, I'll start doing a lot more since I've been running with like top players, right? It's just marking as you come in here. If I just ping this guy, like just like put my crosser on him and ping him, right? Press C. It just means that I know 100% he's in zone. All I need to do is just get one box next to him and I'll be chilling. It allows you to gauge exactly how far you need to get in as you're rotating. And as you can see here, I ended up building too many boxes and none of them are in zone. So you can see here, I waste like 70 mats just on this box here. Start going forward a little bit more, wasting too many mats. Get into zone. I'm not quite in zone here. And that's always even more as I go further forward. It's just very simple things. Again, that mountain zone kind of cuts me a little bit. There's just so many extra builds that you're wasting because you're not properly marking as you come into zone. Mark exactly where the edge of zone is. And then as you come in, cross a mark as you get closer to the players. And that's actually get into the mistake that I make here. So the first thing I did was actually just go ahead and use my pad on the first minute. I could have maybe recycled someone else's, but I'm pretty sure I knew like chug smashes this game, so I didn't want to use them. So as you can see, I just used my pad, landed towards front side, then I tank storm to recycle another pad, and I'll go ahead and landing on front side on a high layer again. This is all very good stuff. And the mistake just comes from a lack of awareness by me on what's going around. As you can see, I'm only boxing in brick. I need to get into the habit of boxing up in metal in this situation. I go ahead and get into my cone. Cut cleared it once for some reason, so it gets low HP. At this point, the kid just goes ahead and runs straight onto my wall, as you can see here. It takes my wall first try, since I'm not holding it, of course. It sprays me down. My floor was low HP since I messed up the edit three times or something. And then he just goes ahead and one pops me. That kid got the best refresh of his life. I had a spaz from that drop as well. It's a completely thrown game just because of my lack of awareness. I probably need to also practice just jumping into a cone, as stupid as it sounds, since I always end up messing up once or twice. And it definitely got me killed this game. If I have a couple more seconds there to react to this kid spraying me down, I can maybe edit my cone, go out of that situation, go out of the box, and I still like a thousand mats at this point, since the rest of my rotates are pretty clean in this game as well. Okay, so the next death, I'm actually going to look at it from my opponent's POV. He's running down, griefing zone rules, trying to kill people beforehand, and actually give him a really free opportunity to kill me. We basically equally traded like a hundred earlier, and we're both sitting up here. And the first mistake that I'm making is just not disengaging from this fight. I know this guy is trying to kill me. There's really no point actually taking this fight. Obviously, if I just try to aim duel him and win, then I'll get really good loot. But normally in a solo game, especially since I'm preparing for Sweden or something, if you're getting W key this early by somebody, that definitely means that they're completely shambles and they've got nothing to play in game with. So it's not even really worth king or killing them if that makes sense. Obviously, in this case, it's worth killing him since you're just breaking his own rules and killing people. And the mistake I make here as well is the fact that I'm sitting in a wood box. I've got a brick box set up over on this other hand side that I could easily be playing around with. That's got my car in it as well. Or alternatively, I could just make a little bit more space, make like one metal box and just box fight from that. But instead, I decided to go ahead and check the angel here. He hops straight in. Control play insta kills me as well with his AR. A little bit unfortunate, but it's just something I need to avoid. Either just straight up disengaging from that fight or approaching in a safer way where I'm in multiple boxes is definitely the play to do that. Okay, so the last mistake of this end game comes from me not having the best awareness as I start my rotate. One thing that I need to get in the habit of doing, and you guys definitely need to do as well, is whenever you land early on a high layer like this, it's just to make sure you get in your cone, or at least look around everywhere. As you can see, I'm trying to beam this player in the back and try to get a kill since he was getting boxed for, but I'm not aware of the fact that he still hasn't rotated, and I try making this rotate for way too cheap. I should be backwards staring here, building a lot more of the angles, but instead I'm not really focused on it. As you can see, my back is completely open. I didn't place a stair or anything behind me to block line of sight. I didn't even scout that way before I left the box. So he beams me for 150 or something, ends up boxing up. And the mistake here, the second mistake of this game, is the fact I'm trying to heal in my cone for some reason. It might seem like a good idea, but if you get pressured or someone jumps into your box, you're basically forced to edit down your floor and you're just on a completely new layer you don't have any information on. As you can see here, it could start smacking on a wall. So what I decide to do is just go ahead and drop straight down, try backwards ramp, I go out one, get pumped in the back for 100 or something, try hitting up again, and this guy just starts W key me. And at this point, I'm just low HP, zone plays back, and I'm in a really scuffed spot, almost jump into boxing, and I'm just dead at this point. 
very small mistakes. Don't heal on a cone like that. Try to, if you're low HP, make two boxes. And there's no point dying with mats in solos. I've done like a thousand mats this game. Just because I'm trying to get too greedy with my healing. I should be investing a lot more mats into making space and getting out of scuff situations. Getting my heals off and then I can just have a nice easy end game where I can play out on nice HP and play really fresh as normally. All right, that's all for this video. You're going to see me down like an absolute fish here in a second since I can't chop through this metal wall. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some mistakes that you make that I make especially in solos and hope this will be useful for you guys. I'm going to try banning a lot more solo camps so I might even try streaming them and also we try to stream Dreamhack Sweden as well hopefully so make sure you guys follow my Twitch. Also if you're interested in more like high level solo content make sure to check out the Solos Masterclass and also make sure to like and subscribe to the video.